welcome to EMTV Social. Myself, Graham Muncy, joined by the dynamic duo tonight, joined by Dave Harley and John McGilvery. Hi, Graham, how are you doing? Um, we're going to look for the Monarchs, where we trips to Ashfield Fieldfield and also look ahead to the Academy match this weekend. So, as it's going to be every Wednesday night going forward, we're here to talk all things Monarchs, Monarchs Academy, and then when time allows, a wee bit of Speedway in general. So, John, your first time on the midweek show. Welcome. This is maybe not old hat. That'd be the wrong way of putting it for me and Dave, but always nice to see a fresh young face join us. <laughs> 43 the other week, mate. I don't feel like a young face, but no, thanks for having me on, guys. It brings back memories of doing the Sunday brunches during COVID and things like that uh, with the riders. That was a, a lot of fun. So, no, it's good to get on. It's good to be talking about some Speedway again um, as well. It feels like an eternity ago, even trying to get the match for Glasgow, which didn't stand a chance. Um, a few weeks ago at, at home, so no, it'd be good to be there back on Friday night with Liam in the tower, um, cheering on the young guys and uh, back to the big action the following week as well. Yeah, and yeah, it's Dave, definitely great. Oh, sorry, I'm yeah. just going to pass over to you, Dave. I was going to say, great that, yeah, yeah. yeah. we've not seen any uh, actions. Sorry, oh. Armadale yet back, and here they're over the bikes last weekend. Yeah, it was great to see some Speedway live and see the Edinburgh Riders back on track at the weekend there and looking forward to seeing them at Armadale on Friday. So just, just remember while we're there for the show of you on uh, Facebook and YouTube and Twitter now this year, or X, sorry, I always get it wrong. So just like, share and subscribe if you want to see more content like this and uh, hear more of our thoughts and uh, more of the Riders' thoughts. Yeah, definitely. And of course... While we don't have, have any Ryko Castagna, but last weekend, an academy team manager, Scott Wilson. But anyone watching, do get your comments in, your thoughts on how last weekend went, or how next weekend you're expecting it to go, or dare, dare I say this, Dave, any questions for the three of us, feel free <laughs> to fire them in. So if we start by looking back at last weekend, of course, all roads led to Ashfield on Friday night. It was the start of the BSN group. A delayed start to the BSN group. A delayed start on Friday night. We're maybe not going to that too much. Well. Uh, but, but then we did a biblical shower that I'm pretty sure my jeans are still drying off and my socks are still wet through from running back to the car. There were encouraging signs for the Monarchs. Of course, worst possible start, 10-2 down, but then really grinty. And, and you could see just when the rain came, we were gearing up for a big match, Dave. Yeah, but it was... As you say, it was a bit of a nightmare after two races, and in you know the that's uh, way it can go sometimes at Ashfield. But it was really impressive, especially Paco, and that Heat Three was very impressive. And Sergi as well, holding holding Harris back, and it was poised to be a cracking cracking meeting. Unfortunately, the rain had other ideas, but uh, yeah, no, it was real good signs of optimism for 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 the Monarchs, and uh, we took the honest Saturday as well. Yeah, John, as Dave mentioned, you know, we, we built into that match in Glasgow. The rain came in, and, and as soon as the rain started, it was 100% the correct decision, as, as anyone that's seen the videos on social media. So we then waited 24 hours later, or 23 and a half hours later, I guess. It's a 7 p.m. tapes up. We're down at Shieldfield, and again, yeah, it was a, a close defeat, but really, that's the best I've ever seen, Josh. I think away from Armadale, control and heats from the start as you've got to do at Shieldfield. And every single one of the one to seven, either way, a winner paid one. That shows yeah. there's points everywhere in the team. Yeah, I, I watched the, the highlights of it on uh, in fact, yesterday and it looked like we actually threw some points away in Curious. I mean, there's been some some decisions. I think the one, the, is it Jai Etheridge? He might feel unlucky. He's excluded in Heat 5. Um, yeah. Paco... I spoke to, to, to Rory today and he felt he should have went and um, I, I thought both incidents probably desmerited to have all four back. It's, you know, I, I think Jim McGregor, and Jim McGregor's not had a great weekend, by the way. Um, I think he's <laughs> looked at those and went, you know, he's got to have seen, there has to have been someone at fault in both of those for him, exclude Jai Etheridge in the first one and then not to exclude um, Paco in the second, or Heat 14, so we maybe threw some points away. Um, I know that uh, that Josh rode very, very well, very, very quick. Um, Rory had to really pull something out of the bag in 15 to get the win. Um, but again, I think we, we, we threw points away. However, the flip side is we're in those positions. 
you know, we look, I think anyone who maybe looked after the first two heats in Glasgow on Friday went, oh, no, not again. Um, but you are right, Dave, what you said, they fought back and it looked like it held the makings of a classic derby uh, in a lot of ways. But, you know, the rain comes, you know, if we got the meeting on in time when we were supposed to, who knows what could have happened. Um, but I think we had the, we, we showed signs on Saturday night that this is a team that's not going to be messed about this year. Um, certainly got the Monarchs fans excited. Looking at a lot of what was said on Facebook and, and social media afterwards, there was a lot of fans who were at Berwick who came away from there thinking, Do you know what, we've probably got a really good team this year. Yeah, and I, I agree with you, John. I mean, I'm always one, Graham will tell you, I'd rather see four riders at the start unless mm-hmm. there's something particular, you know, something real so I Berwick can feel a bit unfortunate, but then that, that's the way speed we go sometimes. Yeah. You're the same on same on, on the Friday way and perhaps a bit of luck there. But I mean, what, what for me was one of the main things on Saturday was was heat too. You know, getting out and getting a 5 1 young yeah. Max winning his first race in, in Monarch's colours. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, that's uh, really gives encouragement. Again, Paco taking on his form from his one race on uh, the Friday into the. Into, a, a, a great meet and unfortunately got hurt a bit in Heat oh. 14 which maybe maybe if he'd been in Heat 15 the result might have been different but he, he says himself it was you'll hear in the oh. interview you know it was the, the right decision taken for the team and it just didn't work out and it's a shame because that one point even if we lost the Super Heat the one point could have made all the difference in this in this uh, competition Yeah you mentioned that there David and you're right and, and I know how key the gates were I, I was Standing in the pits next to Stuart Dixon after Heat 15, and and he basically said, "Yeah, I think we've won that because we had the gates." He knew he could put Richard Lost in three, oh, even though Paco won off a of two in 14. Everyone was saying it was a graveyard by then, so that meant Josh was on the outside. And and Stuart said that he says, "I know that you know Richard needs to be a wee bit tough in a Heat 15 decider. He will be." And and you know, Josh had been flying all night, but asking anyone to come for the outside in Heat 15 across Rory Schlein and Richard Lawson. It's a big ask, and it just wasn't to be. But, as we've all said, that's a Berwick team that took care of Workington very easily, home and away, and one, might I add, and taking care of Glasgow at home by six points. So we, we've ran them closer than anyone else this season. So I think a lot of positives to take, and uh, one man who agreed with me and, and one man we've touched on had a fantastic opening weekend was Captain Paco Castagna. So back all the way, we look back on the first weekend of the Monarch season, obviously a, a rain out after what, six, seven races at Glasgow and then down to Berwick and just, just couldn't they get over the line. But overall, a lot of encouraging signs. Yeah, of course. Uh... It wasn't. It wasn't the kind of meeting that we we were um, we were hoping for. I mean, of course, we want to go away from Berwick with a win. But on the other side, I think we showed uh, we showed strength. We showed well, um, we were very close all meeting long. So it's just a shame he ended like that. You know, even though I won it 14, uh, I think it's right to say that it was my decision not to go out for 15, even though Alec asked me. Um, it's just a shame. Just a shame. I think we, we could have uh, we could have won it with a um, with a bit of a better uh, meeting throughout the first couple of hits, uh, but that's how it is. And I think I think we showed strength again. Berwick is not an easy easy track to come to. Easy team, absolutely not this year. Uh, I think we should be proud of what we've done. Of course, pissed off that we didn't win, but on the other side, it's just that one of the first, if not the first meeting. So yeah. it's okay. And that's and, and you look through the team and obviously Josh outrageously good at Berwick. Lassie, you know, a paid win, both away matches. Yourself, I think, was it three heat wins out of five yeah. over the two. Kai getting back on the bike, oh, a paid win. You know, Sedgman winning heats against Chris Harris. And then heat two at Berwick, Max and Connor pop out. Your Max's yeah. second race ever at Championship level and on a way track and he wins it. So you can oh. go down the one to seven and, and pick good positives. Absolutely, absolutely, 100%. I think, I think apart again, apart from the disappointment that we didn't win, which is fully understandable, I think there are a lot of positives to take. I think that we are showing a lot more team bonding than uh, in the past years, and, uh, and and I'm trying to to do that as well. I think I think we should be happy. Again, apart from the disappointment, but we should be happy. The boys, the, the young guys as well, doing good. 
as you said, you know, it's just the first meeting. We are getting wins. It's just about clicking all at the same time. We always say, but we are doing it. And it's just the start of the season. We should be okay. We The next meeting is going to be tough, but then we got a home meeting. We will be okay. You mentioned that, of course, the you know, week on Friday, the first home yeah. meeting of the season against Berwick. But, you know, that four-point deficit, it'll be tough. They've got some very good Armadale riders, but it puts us in a good position for that bonus point. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see, if we get close at Berwick, I don't see us not winning at home, if it makes sense. They're very, they've got some specialists, of course, and uh, they know that. But uh, positive, again, go home, think about what happened, but then focus on the next one. Okay, that's our first learn for the season. Is if you make it, if we put it in portrait, remember uh, put it over the whole screen, and uh, yeah. remember uh, remember to edit the the first mention that's of the swimming challenge. Not going to be his last day form of the season, is it? <laughs> no, he's, 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 he's some boy, but he's. Yeah, I'm going to say, John. At the preview show, it was it was Justin. Maybe you had to worry about, and, and Paco oh, no. asked the question. Sorry, at the launch show. So I meant to put this together last year, but here I have said you swear jar. <laughs> and here's the first round of the season going in courtesy of Paco. So we'll see how we get by that by the end of the season. It's just how said you sat there and went, I didn't swear. I was like, <laughs> 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 at least twice. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Paco in great form and you're the man on the button, so let's see some of the comments. Let's see what the what the Monarchs faithful thought of last weekend. Put you right on the spot here. <laughs> well, let's uh, start with we can't start without Kieran Lydon. You know, uh, <laughs> Academy <laughs> star. First first in, desperate for these things, desperate to get back, and I'm looking forward to seeing him on... Uh, I've got my Monarch t-shirt on, Kieran. It's over Friday here. Night, yeah. <laughs> but I, I only remember the last minute. It was a quick change, just <laughs> 10 seconds before the start. We needed the two-minute clock in the corner <laughs> for that. Uh, we got Ian Marshall's comment. A lot of just evening chaps. I'll get through if we get anything. But Scott and Yana are saying hello. Uh, on John, first comment about the matches of swimming pool in Glasgow. Yeah, definitely. That drive home on, on Friday night was ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, and there's... Uh, the bucket turned as well. That was the amazing thing. Oh. Yeah, and we got some uh, Chris Black talking about Paco. We talked about that already. And I think Ryan Anderson agrees with you. Uh, <laughs> the Jim McGregor was, He's a bit firm on and have him agreeing with me all these all season. <laughs> 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 to be fair, not that we're turning into a football chat, but that's all that's the long list. You didn't need to stop that column. You could watch it with 10 or 15 of them on. Bring it back to Speedway. Um Bye. just makes a good point there about Paco, and I was going to speak about him just briefly there. Him taking himself out of 15, he's been given the captain say it might have been very easy for him to go, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm going, I'm going, and maybe make the wrong decision. Now we, we we lost a 5-1, you'll always argue maybe it was the wrong decision, who knows. But he made a decision based on the team. you know. And I think that is important, and it's already shows only, maybe only after one meeting, that he's thinking of the team and not just about him. And, you know, he's so, so infectious. He's so infectious. He's, you've met the guy, you know what he's like. Um, you he, he, he can't even smile when you're around him. So I think he's a, a great choice of captain, not for a second that I thought Josh was doing a bad job at all. But, um, you know, Ian Marshall's comment, you've got to love Paco, you just do. You just do, and it's hard not to. And I think the riders will ride for him absolutely 100%. Oh, definitely. And John Clements yeah. picking up on the, on Max, you know, the potential look forward, a big, a big chance for him to step forward coming in the Monarchs. And what Scotty said, he's really look forward to Friday at Academy Lads and cool away next week, the cup next week, but can't wait. Well, there's a question probably for next week's show in terms of <laughs> what we could do at pool, but uh, yeah, no, it's probably worth talking about, about that now. Yeah. Um, you know what? We go in every, every match looking to win, don't we? It's, it'll be a tough one. You know, it's a cup, so anything can happen over two legs. You keep it tight, score as many as you can away. Then we get them back to Armadale, we turn them over, and we march on for our easy treble this year. That's, that's <laughs> as easy as that. 
All right, listen, I, I, you're like, anything's possible. We can go down there and, you know, we, we seem to have a, a solid side in terms of if Paco's going to pick up that middle order, great. You've got Justin, you know, can score points. Josh is looking as quick as he's looked. So, no, I, I don't think we should be fearing anyone. Yeah, exactly. And that probably just about wraps up the Monarchs Championship section of tonight's show. So, we'll now start looking ahead to Friday night. Of course, it is Academy Mergers and the second match of the season for the Academy and I think it would be fair to say Dave the feeling in the camp was was pretty much one of disappointment a, a heavy defeat at Leicester I mean Leicester are a very good team and many te- people's pick to, to win the league but you know with a team with the, the three heat leaders that, that Edinburgh have got and, and two of them off the top of my head at least being ex-Leicester riders um you maybe would have been hoping for a wee bit more. And I know certainly we'll hear from him in a little bit, but I know Scott Wilson was hoping for more. Yeah, I mean, this, as you say, it's a hard challenge. Leicester are, you know, they are kind of the, the target at National League, not just not just for uh, performances on track, but, but that's what you want to get to, development riders coming through that you're now seeing going into the, the Championship and even the Premiership, the Thompson Brothers, the, the, the best example yeah. and, and their team set up like that. But, as you say, a few of the boys, pretty difficult. It's their first match of the season on on an away track, and some of them come back from Connors had that injury last year. So, so you know, can kind of can kind of understand it. But in a, a a small league with only six teams in it, you know, every every point counts, and it would be nice to be closer uh, for when the Leicester Cup Leicester come back later in the year. But but again, you know, Max James and the Leicester team scored some points as well. I'm sorry, go back to the Monarchs there, but uh, but uh, and uh, Sam McGurk with a couple of wins, showing his potential. And I'm sure all the boys are desperate to get back to Armadale on Friday night to to show what they're really about. Yeah, John, it's it's a shortened NDL season. Of course, no playoffs this year. Six teams in it, so it's it's ten matches in total. So away wins will be needed to yeah. win the league but first and foremost you, you probably agree with this I think if a team gets beat at home you can discount them winning the league so every home match takes on even more importance starting this Friday It's such a shame that it is such a small league um, as well these guys need all the opportunity all the track time they can get but you're right see if you lose one match in such a small uh, one home match sorry in such a you're then looking saying well I'm, I've only really got a chance to pick up four I'm going to need to do something exceptional um, away from home you know, looking at that Leicester team that the that's been beaten, you know, they've got Joe Thompson there at number one. <laughs> he should be in that league, surely. He's surely too good for that league. But you know, there's a there's there's a lot of season ahead for some of these guys. Um, it'll be good to see younger guys. I mean, but we're all excited to see the and I'm talking about infectious riders, Kieran Lydon. You know, he's a, he's a box of frogs him. And uh, he's another one that's great to have around the pits and things like that. He, he, he's very infectious. So, no, it'll be good to see these guys. And uh, they were entertaining last year. And I'm just hoping for exactly the same this year. Yeah, definitely. And and, and we'll want to improve big time on the last time the Oxford National League team were there. Mm-hmm. I think they hit 56, 57, something like that. It was, <laughs> wasn't a great night, but they did have Jordan Jenkins and who was the Henry yeah. Atkins in the team that uh, were, were fantastic that night. So so it's not quite as difficult a challenge for the boys this week, but there's, there's still some impressive riders in that Oxford team. Jody Scott, we saw last year, was, was very good. And obviously, Luke Colleen. We had a lot of a uh, lot of races for for Edinburgh and at Armadale towards the end of last season. I mean, Kieran's talking there is uh, he's only uh, Friday night will be his first race since July. He's he's commenting on himself there. So uh, so again, get those cobwebs off. But uh, all the national league is about is opportunity for guys to get get track time, get on get on there, get used to racing, get used to winning races, and hopefully we see a few. Quite a few blue gold crossing the finish line first on Friday night. Yeah, I'm excited to see. Sorry, I'm excited to see Senna Summers as well. Obviously, Aaron um, was big for for Edinburgh. Um, I'll never forget his paid maximum away at Ashfield years and years ago as well. That was incredible. So it'll be good to see uh, the likes of Senna um, and see how he goes. Uh, obviously, will be be following his career. 
Graham yeah, Miller. That, that 13 or, coming off 15 metres to dice yeah. between the two Tigers is still on YouTube for anyone that wants to find it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you're right. It's it's an interesting challenge, isn't it? I mean, Oxford, you, you could argue the politics of it, but Oxford are the reigning league champions. You know, everyone right. sees Leicester, um, you know, whatever happened there and, and run out of fixtures and stuff. But it's a different looking team. I, I spoke to, to Oxford's team manager, uh, Peter Schroke, for the for the programme. And he says that, that yeah, we, you know, obviously when you win the league, you've got to cut points. And then the points from it being cut meant mm-hmm. maybe a change in, in, in how the whole Oxford club is bouncing just now. You look at the Spires coming back. Um, I spoke to, to Scott Frame at Berwick on Saturday. He was down at the Oxford match on Thursday. And I'm led to believe it was a 3,000 sellout wow. um, on Thursday wow. night. The championship still getting two thousand plus, and then the national league. I know they still get four figures, and and, and Peter was telling me, you know, they they've been visiting schools. They give out, you know, loads of tickets to local kids, and they view that as people's sort of gateway into Speedway. Mm-hmm. You start in the national league, and, and you see these riders, and the riders develop into the championship. The fans follow them into the championship, and then up and up and up, and it's it's a great blueprint. And yeah. You know, everyone wished they had the kind of facilities and in the back, and they had to kind of put that back together and stuff. But well, look um, at so, Jim, you look at it, it, what it looks twenty years ago. You had Barry Campbell, Derek Sned, and Andrew Tully, Sean Stoddart, and we followed these guys from the Deal Devils, and we followed yeah. them with the Monarchs. So it's the same kind of thing. And hopefully, with what the Monarchs Academy has got here, we can do the thing over this same thing over the next 10, 15 years with some of these young guys as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as Graham says, that feel-good factor at Oxford, that's something we'd love to replicate. And again, the riders coming through, like say, Jody Scott, Ashton Boogan, things like that. And if anybody thinks that Oxford were maybe only trying out at the in premiership level, they're the first team to make a change with Eric Riss coming yeah. in for Nikolai Clint. So they're, they're taking it very seriously. The one one guy I'm, I'm sorry we're missing on Friday uh, is Alex Spooner, who, I mean, I'm assuming he's still not recovered from that injury he picked up racing for the Morris right, Academy right, yeah. last year. He's not quite made it in time and Lee Harrison takes takes his place at number two on a, a Friday night. But again, Lee, I, I was looking back at last year's uh, game results and Mark Parker got his opportunity guesting but away at National League level. So Lee, that'll be another opportunity for another one of our younger Academy guys coming through to get on, get on track. And uh, But yeah, but for like say Connor Cole, Sam McGurk, they really want to go on and push themselves forward as as heat leaders, and then obviously Max Perry as well. You know, brought in, brought in in the circumstances it was, but it's a great, great uh, potential in there, and looking forward to seeing that. Yep, very much looking forward to getting back trackside at Armoury Day. Of course, without rain off, it is the first chance to see action. I think the weather forecast looks pretty yep. set as a, a year on Wednesday, so. I know one person that's very much looking forward to getting kicked off at Armadale on Friday night is Academy team boss Scott Wilson. We'll hear from him now. Uh, so Scott, it's the Academy side once again and a home match against Oxford and a chance to make amends for what I'm guessing was a, a result that disappointed you at Leicester the other week. It did, yeah. Um, we knew it was going to be a tough meet in Leicester. Obviously, I've got this unbeaten run going back to 2019 at home. Um, so we knew it was going to be tough. But we did have a target points wise in terms of keeping it close for, for the aggregate when they come back later in the season and we didn't really get close to that unfortunately. Um, the first meeting of the season for most of the guys and a couple of them just back, Connor and Max from sort of long term serious injuries. So uh, you know, well it was disappointing, put it down to one of the those sort of bad days at the office and uh, yeah, we'll look to bounce back on Friday uh, with a home match and hopefully get a win under our belts. Yeah, you mentioned that key that you know, we know there's no playoffs or anything, so every result matters and every match matters. But because of that, it means a home record, an unblemished home record, is 100%. The, the team that win the league will not be beaten at home this season. That's right. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, with such a, a short fixture card, um, you know, only five home matches, if you drop any home points, it's really difficult to recover from that. Um, so goal number one for us this season is five wins out of five at home. And then we'll see what we can pick up in terms of away wins or aggregate points. But yeah, as you say, it is absolutely crucial. If we want to be up at the right end of the table at the end of the season, we need to win our home matches first and foremost. And then I guess a final question is just a word to the fans is, you know, get out and support these boys. We see comments about, you know, they're not being speed with every Friday and things like that. And I'm not here to preach to anyone about when they can and can't go. But 
it helps when the, any boys at any level see a full terrace in. So come along and support that team because these are the guys that might make the step up or in a couple of years time it'll be the young academy kids that are into this team and they'll both make it step up. Yeah, 100%. And um, like you say, fans want regular Friday Speedway and we try to have that between the two teams. We obviously haven't had any Armadale Speedway yet, so all the more reason people are still, you know, maybe if you haven't been to the away matches yet, then you maybe haven't seen Speedway yet this year. So get yourself along, come and see what these guys are all about. Um, you know, the racing is usually very high quality, and um, just because the riders are less experienced doesn't mean the entertainment's um, any less than, than the championship level. Um, and it makes such a difference to the guys. I know that was last year that they come round after a race for a 5 1 and they see on the terrace and people backing them, it, it does mean the world to them, and especially these younger guys. Um, you know, we, when we sign these guys, we tell them the sort of club they're signing for and the fan base they've got, so we want our supporters to just come out and prove that on Friday night. And that's a, guy, a year ago did not want interviewed, right? And now, between the launch show and this, we kind of shut them up. <laughs> I, I can tell you, at 20 past six on Saturday, didn't they want interviewed either, John? <laughs> a wee bit of coercion was required. But, I don't know. Sunday, but that's another story. Of course, well, I just thought that one. There and I slow you up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a great interview for any classic rock fans here as well. Barry coming up, dated their playlist since about 1972. <laughs> it's it's right in <laughs> <laughs> but if you do want, and I'm going to dare I'm going to say this, if you do want to hear a wee bit more up to date music, then get yourself along to Armadale on Friday <laughs> with the Monarchs Academy versus Oxford Chargers in National Development League action. Half past seven tapes up. Tickets are available now at edinburghmonarchs.co.uk slash tickets. And if for any reason you can't make it along, myself and Mike will be in situ on the stream. That's Edinburgh, oh, I forgot, like edinburghmonarchs.co.uk slash EMTV. That's one. I'm, I'm at practice, Dave. It's my first one since, uh, <laughs> since a wee while ago. Well, well, rusty, well, rusty. <laughs> um, but yeah, so really looking forward to another big weekend ahead. Of course, the, the academy then go down to Oxford on Sunday. So it's a quick fire double header. So they'll be hoping um, mm -hmm. to get their season on track with a double. We will be looking to get our season on track at Armadale with that visit off Oxford. Um, I guess until then, until Friday night, oh, as always, thanks very oh, much wait. for joining me, Dave. Thanks very much for joining me, John. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Oh. I'm going to put 50 guys to believe I've been buffering all over the place. And, uh, uh, yeah, I've been yeah, As always, thanks very much. <laughs> and goodbye. Cheers, thanks. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. We'll see you. See you next time. He says scrambling for the end screen button. Oh, <laughs> man.